You know, there's a lot more to the world of professional fishing than just fishing tournaments. There's a lot more. In fact, that might not even be the most important thing. There's the trade shows, the products, and of course, the all-important sponsors. So if you really want to take your game to the next level, how do you do it? What can you do to attract a big sponsor? Well, our special guest today knows it better than anybody else. We're talking with the marketing manager at Daiwa today. All that and more live right here on Bass 365. That's right, guys. There is a ton more to the world of fishing than just being able to catch a bunch of fish. That helps a lot, of course. But you got to be able to market yourself. You got to be able to work the trade shows. You got to be able to work with sponsors, more importantly than that. But how do you even get started with that? I know there's a lot of questions out there. I've had them before. And I know, of course, no one knows them better than our guest today, but also the man himself, Ricky B. Ricky. What's up, guys? Mikey, you know, I'm a really, started, man. yeah, I'm, I'm great. I'm great. We survived the hurricane down here in Florida, whatever. Yeah, we're, getting it, we're getting it today. I think the uh, James River is supposed to crest it like 20 feet, something like unheard of. Wow. But uh, I'm excited about this show tonight because uh, yeah. our, our guest has been a friend for a very long time and uh, he knows how to play the game. But we yeah. also got some exciting news from Daiwa and uh, Evergreen. So uh, yeah. I'm really excited about everything that we can learn from them, ins and outs of how this works, how the other 50% of professional fishing works, other than just fishing itself. Right. Uh, but also, I mean, it's Daiwa. Daiwa's got some amazing products, some great, exciting news. So this is going to be a banger show. I just absolutely know it. So I don't see any reason holding them back any longer. We got them in the green room. Are we ready? Let's do it. All right, guys. Welcome, marketing manager for Daiwa USA, Kurt. Ira Kyle. Hey, Kurt. Hey, guys. How are you? Good evening, Kurt. How you doing, buddy? Good, Ricky. Um, hey, I want to thank you guys for inviting me on your show. Um, We've come a long way, right, Hammer? I've, I've known you for a long time, Ricky. We worked together for a long time, and we've done well together. So I'm, I'm really That's right. I think we started Jackal, what, I want to say almost 20 years ago. Pretty close to it. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I know Cody Meyer was a rookie. Uh, co-angler on the FLW tour and you're like you need to hang on to this guy right here and uh it's one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life Cody's you know Cody's a great guy um Mikey is is new to Bass 365 but is fast becoming a big part of it um yeah. and he, he brings some skills that that I certainly don't have and I'm, I'm more than welcoming for sure well, I, I think the most impressive thing here is that you guys, uh, Kurt, you've known Ricky for almost 20 years and you're still friends with him. So that's, that to me, is that, you know, that's an accomplishment on its own. And you know, I the guy agree. Just, he just gives me a great time time Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> 20 years is a long time, Ricky. A absolutely. <laughs> so um, I, I really wanted to have you on to talk about some new product from Daiwa. Um, which I know is uh, for your swim bait guys. There it is, the 300. Could you just maybe tell us a little bit about the the 300 and um, you know some of the some of the features? We know we know about the T wing, but maybe for people that don't, we can talk about T wing a little bit as well. Or what is the 300 altogether? Exactly. Okay, so many people want a swim bait reel, and they're trying to use um, like the big round reels. And they're fine. We make them too. But the problem is sometimes they don't feel as comfortable in your hands. And so we finally made a true bass fishing bait casting reel. So it has a low profile design, just like the regular tattoos we have, but it's a bigger size. So we're calling it the 300. Um, also, it's made, a lot of times they're going to use them for swim baits. So it's got more line capacity with being a bigger size. But it's low profile, so it really fits comfortably in your hands. It's got the T-Wing system, as, as Ricky kind of mentioned, which is um, one of our flagship items for the level wine system that allows you, to, it opens up bigger and allows the, you to cast further because there's going to be less friction 
as the line moves back and forth in the bigger area. So that's going to be key for throwing swim baits because you're going to get more distance. Um, when we built this reel for swim baits, we know these swim baits are going to be big. So we actually have aluminum uh, frame, but we put aluminum side plates on the handle side and the crank side so that it adds really a lot more durability and a lot more strength. And we don't do it with every reel, but on the reels that we want to have super a lot of strength, uh, we do that and it keeps the frame in alignment. It doesn't move around. And when the frame and the handle side of the reel doesn't move around, it, it's going to last a lot longer and it's going to wind in more evenly. So that's a real important feature. Um, it's got a 110 millimeter handle. So you're going to need that big handle when you're cranking in those big swim, swim baits and it's going to be a lot more comfortable for to use with that big handle. Um, it comes in a 6.3 to 1, a 7.3 to 1 and an eight to one gear ratio. So we got all that covered both left and right hand. Sometimes manufacturers don't always offer left hands. We're seeing more and more fishermen use left hand It reels. Even the right-handed guys now are trying to be more efficient. So they're, you know, using their left hand and, uh, you know, casting with the right and they just crank with their left and they don't have to switch hands. So um, it's going to sell for $260.99. $269.99 is uh, MSRP on it. So it's, it's fairly reasonably priced, but um, so far we had nothing but good things about it. And uh, guys can even use it in some light solar applications. So uh, that's basically our, our new product for this year as far as, far as the bait cast reels goes. I know Ish was excited about the saltwater applications, but there's been an existing swim bait rod and the Tatula Elite Series rods. Um, maybe if you talk about that a little bit and then we'll kind of talk about that whole lineup. Yep, we have a, a Tatula a swim bait rod that Ish helped design. It's an eight foot rod. We also came out with brand new Tatula, the, the line below the uh, Tatula Elites. And we came out with a new swim bait rod for that one. Uh, we came out with that in the 7.3 and a 7.9. Uh, it's rated to 15 to 30 pound test. Uh, the 7.3 goes for $189.99 and a 7.9 goes for $199.99. And, it's got a little bigger grip on the, the 7.9, so it, it really fits nicely with the uh, 300. But going back to the Elite Series, um, now that's a special series. Most of you guys, I think most of our Daiwa listeners know about that. It's a, it's very special line of, that we built um, from the pros. And the pros, we really use our pros the way I feel you're supposed to. We use them for the design of our reels and knowledge of them fishing and input from them. And they, they basically have their own signature rods. And each guy uh, on the team uh, picked an action that is really their specialty. Uh, so for Ish Monroe, it happens to be frog fishing right. and uh, flipping. So they, they kind of design the rods the way they want, uh, the guides they want, the handles they want, and um, actions are most important. So when they design the rods, they, they really use them as a team because not every guy can you know, design every rod. So right. as the specialist like Ish designs this frog rod, the guys know this This is one of the best frogging rods you're going to be able to use because that's what Ish Monroe does, just like right. they might use uh, Brent Ayler's rods for, uh, you know, crankbaits or any of those other applications. So the main thing is these are, these are like designed by the pros. They're going to be the right rod for the right application. That's the biggest key. And now we've actually gone a step further. We've made so many bait casting reels we actually have a system match reel for your rod. If you want to have a long nice. cast reel, you know, we have a flipping pitch reel that has a big handle of 110, but it's it's made for a low profile trajectory and guys can uh, flip easier and smoother into the water. So it's almost got so much technology in the reels that we're system matching uh, bass reels with rods. I'm a, I've been really impressed. As you know, Kurt, I, I just got my hands on a couple of these uh, combos here. The frog rod by Ish Monroe was the first one I wanted to be a Florida guy here. Flipping and frogging is, is what I do more than anything. Um, uh, so I'm real excited to get that one because, yeah, of course, nobody nobody knows frogging better than Ish. And I know he he designed that rod for his specifications. But I've been I've got my hands on that pitch and flip reel, and I am – I excited, excited about that and what you guys have done with that. That's got a hundred millimeter handle on it too. Um, I'm gonna try, to, I'm gonna try to show it to you, Mikey, in just a second here if I can get it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't bring mine with me this time. 
But my co-host is a, a big chocolate lab, and he's kind of being crazy tonight. But uh, you see that? <laughs> he's a good boy. So you can see the handle. I mean, it's a you know, it's a gigantic handle, and uh, it's got a shallower spool here, so you don't you don't have to put as much line on it. You end up not dealing with the the backlash issues. If I'm correct, right, Kurt? Correct. Yeah. Uh, That's not just a bigger handle, too. It's got bigger knobs on it as well. So it's just, it's beef right. for you. You know, I do, a, when I'm pulling a fish out of a big, heavy cover like that, a lot of times your hand's going to slip off. It's just easier to grab hold and wrench them right out real easy. But I believe, Kurt, I believe there's a different braking system involved in that reel as yeah, well. We, we actually fine-tune the MagPort system so that that's where when you, when you low pitch it to the water, it slows it down a little bit and helps it have a low, low splash, low trajectory, low splash, low, you know, less splash in the water, you know, is going to help you not spook the fish. Um, it was funny. Uh, one of the um, fish and tackle retailer magazines, one of the uh, editors of the magazines, his name's Ken Duke, uh, saw that reel. We came out with it and he, I guess he really is a, a big flipper. And he actually told me he wanted to try one. So I got one. And after he used it, he actually told me, he said, you know, when you guys came out with that, I didn't think it was going to be that big a deal and it was going to make that big of a difference. He goes, that is my favorite reel now because it, it, sure. he, he really saw the benefit of what the reel did. And we had uh, Randy Howell on uh, a couple weeks ago here. And, of course, you know, he's he's one of your Team Daiwa guys. He's, he's designed a few of these different rods as well. Uh, he actually told me he uses that pitch and flip reel for frogging, frogging and skipping underneath ducks. Now it doesn't hold as much line as as you know uh, the other reels does, but it's enough for a big long cast is what is is all he's concerned with out there. But he says just that low trajectory, everything that you're talking about with flipping works really well for skipping under docks and frogging as well too. So that's uh, that's I'm, I'm excited to get to try that myself too. Yep, there's a lot of applications of crossover stuff too with all of our products, like you said, and Randy's figured out one. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's one of the things I like the best. You you know, I, I'm not I'm sure there's companies out there that's gonna say, Hey, this is my flipping rod, or this is my pitching rod, or this is a flip and pitch reel. And there's really not a heck of a lot of difference. You guys have literally designed a reel technique specific for flipping and punching, and now you put the name on it. So it's not just a, not just another reel with a different size handle on it, it's completely redesigned for that technique. And that's to me, that's very impressive. And it matches the rods. Um, it kind of didn't start off that way, but the engineer keeps keep coming out with new designs, new things that we're just like, wow, what are they going to develop next? So right. it became more of a system match thing. For Most guys will have, what, 10 or 12 rods on their deck anyways, and they're really going to set them up, right, for the right application that they want to do. They're going to have their flipping set up. They're going to have, you know, their top water set up, their drop shot set up anyway. So if they're going to do that, let's let's make the you know the system out of the right product that's going to really help them benefit from having the right comp, you know system together to do what they're going to do. Right, and that's that's the one thing I've heard from the guys. You know, we've been shooting this stuff since day one, but you have Ish Monroe who is not a drop shot fisherman, but <laughs> if he if he knows he needs to throw a, a drop shot, he's going to pick up. Uh, Brent's rod or, or Cody's rod and know that he has the best setup for fishing a bait that he's not very comfortable with. Yeah, one thing about Ish, he he actually is, I feel, and he's he won't admit it really, but he's kind of told me he's actually a pretty good drop shot guy right. being in California because uh, that's what we do a lot out there. And he just doesn't like to do it. He just doesn't like, he was a power guy and he wants to right. That's why he likes to fish. And it, it, sometimes it hurts his fishing because he forces trying to catch fish the way he wants to on, you know, flipping and pitching. And if they're not, you know, biting that way, he's losing out. But there was a tournament. I can't remember what lake it was on. Um, it might have been Lake Erie where he they were catching fish drop shotting. And he pulled out his drop shot rod. And he, I'm pretty sure it was a 10th place. He got in the cut right. as he was catching Fish uh, drop shot in Sturgeon, Sturgeon Bay, I believe. Yes, I think that's what it was. Yeah, but the, the biggest thing is just hearing the guys talk about it. I mean, we got the best anglers in the world, arguably, that are talking about it. I know if I pick up Randy Howe's little crankbait rod and I'm throwing a square bill, that is the best rod for the job. 
So when you're looking for a rod, you know when you buy the rod, it is what you need, not you know, not something that that. Yeah, there's a lot of, for that situation. There's a lot of consumers, and I could see how this would be confusing. You have so many rods by so many manufacturers, and a lot of them just say it's a 7.3 medium or medium. So you're right. trying to figure out what is this rod going to be good for? Because the actions are going to be different. And so we try to take some of the guesswork out of that equation saying, okay, I'm going to, you know, frog fish, as we said, I'm going to just get this. Uh, frog reel or one of the reels that we you know all around reels use it on this frog rod and i know i'm eliminating that out of the equation that i right. do i have the right rod or the right reel for this am i going to be doing so you can try to concentrate on catching the fish you know instead of worrying about is this action really the one especially for beginning fishermen that's exactly. very helpful in, in helping them decide and that's why we kind of started labeling the rods because we used to get people at the shows always come up to us and go i'm you know i'm one of long cast you know crankbaits what do you guys suggest and it was a constant you know trying to explain to them what, what are you trying to do what you know, what size weight right. for? and so we we want to try to help them decide and make it easier for them there's a lot it, of crossover but it does help them it, get in the ballpark of what they're trying to do with the and the there are some universal rods in the lineup. Like I know yeah. Cody has one, Brent has one, yeah, uh, Brandy has one as well that will fill more than one niche. But if you're looking for a frog rod, you know to go buy the Ish Monroe frog rod. And it's going to be the best frog rod you can put your hands on. I think, Kurt, you hit it right on the head here. It's It, re it helped a lot of people, but it really helps out those beginnings because there's, you know, we, we kind of take things for granted being – guys have been in the industry for a long time i know what the difference of a short butt to a long butt of the placements of the eyes of you know different actions and different powers and what they all mean but not everybody does um mm -hmm. but we it's a lot easier to relate it to techniques i'm going to fish a texas rig or i'm going to fish a carolina rig or i'm going to fish a frog and here it is it's labeled for me and it's easy and maybe hopefully through that they can learn that hey this is a good top water rod or jerkbait rod because it's got a shorter butt on it. And of course, all your pros do a really, really good job of making videos explaining all that stuff out there to everybody too. So I think it's a really great, not just a great easy method to select rods, it's a good tool. It's a good tool for people to be able to learn and get better with it. So, right. so one thing I want to mention too, so um, once we develop a rod, you know, an action that the pros really helped us develop, we tried to uh, bring that type of action down in another series, uh, like the Tatula, not the Tatula Leap, but the next one down, Tatula or Tech Tatula XT. So it's a lower priced rod. Uh, maybe the guides are not as good as on the Elite series, or you know, the, you know, something like that. But the rod's going to be basically the, the right rod, the same type of actions that you would use on the 74 Frog rod, but in a lower cost. You know, about $150 for guys that are in high school or college, you know, on a budget and they can't spend right. a lot. So we kind of do that on all the line. We bring the technology down and other lower price products so that everyone can really afford it. And it, you can move your way up in, in our line as you get better or, or can afford it more and uh, really understand the products. That's right. Right. Now you, you got your hands full over there, Kurt. I mean, Daiwa has got a lot of products. And we're here. We're sitting here talking about one line. We're talking about Hatula <laughs> Elite series, the the signature rods, stuff like that. But you guys aren't even just rods or reels. You also have a big, broad uh, lure line as well, too. And you're talking saltwater, and you're talking all sorts of different methods here, too. Uh, how do you keep it all in one, you know, in one place? Like you're a wealth of knowledge, and I guess that just comes from experience. How long you've been in the industry altogether? Yeah, it takes a while um, to learn all the stuff, but I've been here long enough to where I actually see the technology get developed as it's brand new. So that's kind of how you kind of keep track of it. At least if you've been there for a while, you can kind of say, well, we developed this as we spool and becomes more of the line and you already know about it. Same thing with saltwater. We're just coming out with uh, conventional reels that are two speed and we've needed those for a long time. So having, having those, you know, being there when they're being made uh, really helps to try to keep track of all the different products we make. But we make a ton, and it is hard between 
fresh water and salt water because we make so many things. And like you said, now we're making, we, we distribute lures, we make lures, we uh, partner with companies, we partner with Gary Yamamoto, good companies that we feel we can right. both benefit from to make, uh, you know, worms. He's got, um, in our opinion, he makes the best plastic. So I why not have him design, help design and, and make our baits. We kind of designed them a lot in Japan, the Nico bait, but he's just, he's using his plastics and it really works. Um, we, we were now making uh, line. We're bringing up, actually in Japan, they have all the stuff that we don't have here. And, and you guys have seen some of that with the Japanese lure companies bringing stuff over and everyone's drooling over them because they're so unique and different. Absolutely. And they have all those things. And, you know, when I, when I found out about our fluorocarbon that we just launched this year, it's, it's called J4 Samurai. Um, it comes in two, two, two pound all the way up to 20. And right. we, we, we try to make it better. So for example, we have a filler spool that's 220 yards and halfway we have a die with sticker. So if you're trying to fill up two, two reels, you know, when you get to, you know, 110 yards, you, that's where you stop and you put, you know, you want to fill up the other reel with the rest of it. So you can get two oh, uses. Awesome. Up. Um, we also make in a thousand yard um, bulk spool. But when we, when we brought that over, I found out when we were doing this project T, they, the guys from engineers from Japan bought this line over and they put it on some of the test reels that we were testing. And some of the guys started using it and they used to say, what is this line? And I go, I don't know. Ask them. And I found out this was like five years ago. We were testing product. They had 18 different fluorocarbon lines over there. And I said, what? They go 18 different brands. I said, can you just give us one? Just yeah. give us one of those. That's what we need out in the and US. You remember that fish catch Cody had this year? I'll find it. I'll find it and get it posted on Bass 365 somewhere. But it was an epic catch. And, and Cody told me, he said, I believe with any other line, I would not have caught that fish. And I think it was a, you know, a, a, a catch that got him into a championship round in the BPT. Yeah, he told, he told me that story. Uh, he was using the line first. And uh, he told me that he was catching fish. I, I think it was, um, I think it was drop shotting, but he was using, normally he would said he would, he would use 12 pound test line, for example. And because the strength of the line was like 12, but it had the diameter of 10. He, he could use 10. He felt the action was better and he was getting more bites and yeah. it was like he was using 12. Right. So that, that's a big benefit. It's a, you can get a thinner diameter, but the strength is, is stronger than the diameter. And that's what a lot of guys like. And it's really uh, flexible, comes through the guides really good. Um, and so basically five years later, I finally got this line over here. Uh, they let us have it. And it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, and and that is all set. so as soon as uh, Cody got the line, of course, just called me and said, hey, how come Cody's got the line? You know, I need to get some. So uh, now, and, and it's good to have Ish because he's, he also tested it for strength. He's a power guy and right. lifting and pitching, you know, you got to fish in a heavy cover. And he definitely said, man, you don't need to do anything to this line. It's, uh, it's so good. I can feel a lot more. And it's so durable that um, he, you know, he, he got on board right away. So, so Mikey, let's all, uh, there, there's a, a question that yeah. I've asked Kurt a thousand times. So I, we're going to ask it again. I've seen this one. I'm going to bring it up on the screen here for everybody to see here. So, so Kurt, how do you, how do you figure out what products you bring from Japan? And uh, if you had one that, that you couldn't get your hands on, what would it be? Well, we, you know, I'm like you guys, I'm a fisherman. So when we see their catalog, they have a master catalog they put out like we do, but it's not like our catalog. It's like three times the size. <laughs> and we look at that thing and go, hey, why don't we have that? Well, how come we don't have that? You know, they're all sitting around, all the sales guys in the market, and we're sitting around, look at this, you know, and we, it just looks good. The stuff looks good. Uh, we have to practically beg them to let us have some of the stuff. Um, and some of the stuff we do bring over, some of the lures, um, we're getting better at it, you know, letting at first they were kind of stingy with it. Now they're like, well, you guys right. are doing pretty good with this stuff. Yeah, I guess we can give you this. And they make rainwear. They make gear. Um, really? They wow. make every, they make all kinds of stuff that clothing is really big over there. Um, they have, uh, you know, cameras, you know, like like GoPro cameras and things like really? that. Yeah, yeah it's oh, not only. So they actually have 
most people don't know this for the viewers they have a daiwa store over in japan daiwa owns their own stores and really? they even sell competitors products in the stores i Didn't think I, I think there's close to 20 of these stores it's not like one uh, and you go in there and there's every tackle manufacturer just like a normal tackle store uh, along with daiwa product and we went in when I, I got to go last year and it was it was such a great experience to actually see all the lures they have crammed into these stores and it's so yeah the one thing to answer your question i i would like to see more of the the lures come over right uh, there's so many different ones they have um that are exciting that have different actions uh, you know of course that's the thing is having a new lure that the fish haven't seen yet right so right, for sure we, we are starting to bring some over uh we actually distribute evergreen lures uh for them and evergreen again is a is a japanese company that has a ton of product that they, we, I, I'm fighting with uh, the, one of the guys at in our work, Satoshi, who is in charge of lure, saying, why don't we bring this over? You know, what, what's the holdup? And he keeps saying, well, we gotta, we gotta make it, you know, a lot of them, and you know, all this, these problems. They go, well, we need to just get them over. I don't, you guys already make them. It just seems doesn't seem that hard to bring them over. I used to have the same thing at Jackal when uh, Ty, the owner, used to come over. I used to tell him, bring your catalog because we're gonna go shopping. And I would, I would make him bring over three or four lures the next year that I saw from his catalog that, you know, we didn't have in our lineup or that was unique, and and he's bringing over unique products that are quality. Our our company stands for quality, so we only want to bring over the stuff that is good when we're, when we're ready and that's going to be quality. So most of the guys don't have to have to worry about our quality and want to use any of our stuff. You know, it's going to be good. And it's, that's something I'll say that for whatever reason, you know, being a, a Virginia redneck, I'm connected with these Japanese companies like no other. And um, they don't do anything. And, you know, I'm talking uh, Daiwa, uh, Lucky Craft, Suzuki. Don't do anything until you're 100% ready, where I think a lot of times some of these companies jump the gun with their product. And maybe it's not the quality it should be. So, you know, I, I do see that with, with the Japanese for sure. Um, yeah. We were talking about Evergreen a little bit. I, we got all sorts of breaking news that we can't break as much as I want to. Kurt, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but, yeah, you think we know you know. Yeah, <laughs> I know let's, you know. Let's talk about this little guy a little bit. The success of this little guy. For guys that may have not seen it. It's, oh, uh, is that the Flat Force you're holding the, up? Yeah, the Evergreen Flat Force. Um, we started filming this with a year and a half ago with Brett Height, and uh, it has become a dominant crankbait. I mean, for sure, the, the hooks are so sharp, they're sticking in my hand now. So tell us what you can about the Flat Force. Well, the Flat Force, we actually added uh, some new colors this year. We expanded the line because of the popularity of it. Um, you know, it's it's a unique, has a unique action, has that circuit board lip, so it's really gonna bounce off of heavy cover and the way we know a lot of this stuff is from Brett Height. Brett Height's been using these baits. I think he's been trying to keep a lot of them a secret. I thought sure he has. <laughs> you know, I would say, Brett, what, we, what should we bring over? Um, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? And he, they send him baits, and he tries them all the time. And I think he keeps them and you know uses them for himself. And then says, no, that won't be good in the U.S. But you know, it really I is. Need Twenty more. <laughs> and so now I'm investigating his uh, his bait selections a little bit more. But he's he's been using this bait and it has a has a you know a nice action to it and deflects really well. That's one of the key things and it's just um, you know something the fish haven't really seen. Uh, another thing we launched uh, this year was the the gizmo and I don't know if you guys have seen that one, but it's a lastimer bait. Um, it's 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 not you know going to be something you do every day, but I I really hear when the mayflies are you know right. around in that season. That's what it mimics when you when you have a bait that you know, a mayfly that falls in the water uh, under a tree or something that the bass come up and eat it. That's something like this you would throw in those kinds of areas uh, where it's elastomer and it actually floats on the water. So you just kind of shake it and it looks like a bug that just landed in the water. So that's that's another exciting product we brought over. And we also brought over a, a smaller lure called the Piccolo. Um, PC5 is the model number. And that's just a smaller profile bait. Uh, a lot of times you'll get smaller bait fish and then you have to dig in your tackle box and try to match the hatch and try to figure out what kind of small bait do I have. Well, this 
this fits that something it's, like that. it's a small crankbait actually um i can't remember exactly how deep it runs i had a couple but anybody that knows me knows that i had a car fire this year hmm. and the piccolos went the way of the car fire piccolo goes about three feet and i i remember that uh you're telling me about your car fire <laughs> and that and Ricky's telling me how all his evergreen baits burned up, and I got everything got them. burned up, <laughs> except for the flat force. This one, I actually stole this from. Miraculously, he still has one. I, I stole this from somebody last week, but anyway. <laughs> well, you know what I'm taking out of all of this here is there's some amazing products over in Japan, and Ricky, it is definitely time for a road trip or a plane. Sure. Trip, we got a call because that sounds like a heck of a live cast walking through the Daiwa store. Actually, oh, yeah. actually, Kurt, Kurt has never invited me, Mikey, but I talked to Minoru yesterday, oh, yeah. and I told him it was on my bucket list, and he said it was going to make it happen. So I put a challenge out to Kurt, whoever can get me to Japan first. <laughs> we'll, we'll have a good time. I just remember that there, there's two to the team here. So <laughs> That's right. That's right. Hey, I love you. I love you a lot, Mikey, but if I get to get to Japan, I'll yeah, I, I completely understand that. I'm <laughs> sure that, that, that sentiment is dittoed on that one. <laughs> yeah, Ish Monroe is also a, he calls himself a tackle junkie. And I guess he said he went there one time. I can't remember what company invited him. And he's, he brought two suitcases and uh, one barely had enough clothes in there. And he said he filled two, both of them up with tackle on the way back. I'm, and, I'm quite sure. So. I, I, I definitely but, understand. I'm, I'm a self appointed tackle junkie myself. So I've been to Mikey's house. He I, absolutely is. A hundred percent. Yeah. Stuff everywhere. <laughs> definitely. So that, that's really cool. There's a lot of great things in Daiwa, great things coming from Daiwa, and you guys have a whole wide spectrum of, you know, the fishing world. You're out there, yeah. freshwater, saltwater, lures, rods, reels, lines. There's really not much you're doing. That you're not doing, I guess I should say, out there. Right. But to be able to do it successfully, and that's another part of this this whole show that we wanted to talk to you about here, to be able to find the success that you've had, you guys have put together an elite team, Team Daiwa, uh, some of the best pros out there in the world, and they're really, really dominating out there. And this has been a great year for it. So um, I, I tried to do a little bit of research before I came here to get the, the – a little more of the stats and stuff, but I know you're proud of the Team Daiwa, so I'm going to let you share a little bit of what you know about how well Team Daiwa has done this year, this year in particular. Well, uh, many people don't know this, but um, I actually was working at Daiwa before, and it's probably been 12 years uh, at least since I worked there, and I worked there for 10 years. And when I worked there, um, it actually started from the R&D department, uh, some of the R&D guys, again, tried to make rods and they really weren't sure for bass rods. So they started um, working with some pros. And the more we work with them, you know, the rods, of course, got better. They decided to build this team. This was really before I got there. And then once it got to a certain point, um, the R&D guy that was running it, he went into sales. And then I was working in marketing. They say, Kurt, you're going to have to take over this team. And I go, what do you mean? They go, well, there's no one else. It's just you. You got to do it. And I'm like, well, I don't. And I really didn't know a ton about bass fishing. So I'm like, well, these guys are the pros. I don't know if I can really talk to them. And they go, well, you're going to have to figure it out. So the team that I inherited, and I've added some guys, but Larry Nixon was on the team. Rick Clun was on the team. And Denny Brower was on the team. And along with Guido Hibden and George Cochran. And those are some of the best bass fishermen at that time. Uh, yeah. I think Larry Nixon was on, on the Bassmaster circuit was the number one all-time money winner. Rick Clun was second, and they would be fighting, you know, for that spot. Who win, And Denny Brower would be third. And then we had, again, J, uh, Guido Hibden and George Cochran and some others. That, then I, when I got those guys, I started picking their brain right away. And they actually helped teach me the ins and outs of bass fishing. And I actually got to learn from the best guys. And I, I you know, we then added, you know, Jay Alice and uh, Ken Cook was on the team. Um, um, Davey Height, who, you know, you guys know from the Bassmasters was on the yeah. team. Um, 
many, in fact, Jay Ellis is getting inducted to the Bass Fishing Hall of Fame this year, and Davy Height was in, inducted before. Uh, so a lot of the team has been getting inducted. Rick Clun's already in, Larry Nickman's already in. So I got to learn from these these guys, and we started that signature series actually back then. And then later on, actually, I left. We actually got away from that, and we kind of didn't, you know, have as many team members. And um, when I came back, they they kind of asked me what what do we need to do to get our stuff selling again? I go, well, you guys lost the team. You guys have to have guys that know how to build these rods for us that, you know, with the techniques like we used to have. And they agree. They said, you're right. You know, we, we don't have that anymore and it's not selling like it used to. And, and, and they asked me, what do I said? I want to build up a team again and uh, start it all over. And I, I guess Ish Monroe was there and Randy Howe was there and Andy Montgomery were the three guys. And I went to them and said, uh, guys, uh, we're going to, I'm going to build a team and starting with you guys and um, you guys can either stay on the team or I'm going to start from the ground floor. And they, they right. kind of looked at me like, what are you talking about? I want to be on the team. And I said, well, I'm just making sure you're in. And they said, no, we're all in. I said, okay, so I'm going to ask you to work for us. You're going to have to start making videos and, you know, helping us. Cause that's really what we need to do. And if you can't do that, I'm going to find someone else. And they all said, no, we want to do that. We want, he goes, we, we, they don't use us. Skywood never uses us. We don't know why. We want to, we want to help you guys. So we, we built a team from there. Uh, Brent Ehler was the first guy that I got to come over, which was an awesome fisherman. And once he got on board, we got Cody Meyer and, you know, Randy Howe. Randy Howe was there. I mean, uh, we got a few other guys. I'm thinking Garrett Lindner's on the, on the team as well. And uh, Brett Heights on there for Evergreen, Iowa. And we have, we had built this team of not only guys that can fish, but the other thing you have to do is you have to really be able to promote your sponsors. Exactly. Um, you know, you have to learn how to make videos. And one of the reasons why Brent Ehler was so important was not only was he a top angler winning everything, but he was with GoPro and he still is as one of his sponsors. And he could make videos himself right. and he would post these videos online. I go, man, you, this, this is the guy I got to get. And when I got him, we did the same thing. And same with Cody. Cody was really good for me working at Jackal, making videos and talking about product. And we, that's how our team started really educating people on the products that we make and building these right actions and then explaining them why you need this, you know, certain lure, the certain line, the certain rod to help, to really help fishermen get better. And that's what, you know, manufacturers should really be doing, helping the sport, helping people learn how to fish so that they can enjoy it just like, you know, their kids and teaching them. And and that's how the team started. And I really felt we've uh, been super successful with a lot of wins. And, uh, you know, the guys I have have really great personalities. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of like a family. We get together, we make these Project T videos together. We're all, uh, you know, in, in a group filming and we have dinner together and, you know, the guys get along real well because we're, uh, you know, all uh, like a team basically and eating together. And it, it's it's been a really great experience for me and very successful for us as well. So, and, Mike, you know, yeah, I got, a, I got a couple things I got to say. Uh, yep. Kurt has done a tremendous job building the Daiwa team. The, the Johnson brothers, you know, spent a little bit of time with them, both amazing. You know, both amazing young men. Yep. But I have to speak to Patrick Walters. Uh, I remember, I think it was two years ago, it was uh, Patrick's first year on the team. We were at a press conference, and uh, Kurt looked at Patrick and said, the only reason I hired you is because you said you could do what you could do. <laughs> well, damn, Kurt, I think he's done a hell of a job. Yep. Yeah. It's funny because uh, – I came to Patrick and, you know, he was, he was just graduated from college and he was actually doing really well in the college fishing. And I went to him and said, Patrick, you know, do you want to be on, you know, I, I think you could be a good fit for our team. And he was like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I loved Iowa stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I just, you know, you seem good on paper. You got a lot of wins. You, and I was talking to the guy and I, I like a lot of people that have good personalities. And I said, man, you have a really good personality. 
And I said, the only thing I just don't know is, can you really fish in the big leagues? You know, which is the elite. <laughs> circuit. And he said, Kurt, I double qualified for the elites. And I go, I know. I, I'm, that's one of the things I'm impressed about. But just because you got in doesn't mean you can really compete. And I said, man, you know what? I'm going to put you on the team, but I hope you don't wait too long to pay me back with some, you know. Or you didn't of, wait long. <laughs> and he reminds me of that today. How's this? Oh, I do too, Kurt, right? That's what he says to me all the time. And we actually laugh about it now. He would say, Kurt, you told me I could, I had to prove myself right away. And, I, and, and I'm doing it. And I said, yeah, you are. You are. And that's the other story is, you know, we had all these bass guys. And then with MLF migrating and bringing a lot of guys over, uh, most of my, actually all the team went except for Seth Fighter. And I, I really feel that uh, both organizations are good. I know there's sure. kind of a controversy all the time about MLF versus Bass. But I look at both of them as good for the industry. You know, Bass has been around forever. Um, they have a great history with bass fishing. And right. when when all those guys left, I, I it was Seth by himself. And I finally brought Patrick on. And I kept thinking, I got to get two guys. One guy and two guys really aren't a team. And I had to really kind of build it quick. So I started looking around and talking to my reps who, you know, the guys in Canada, the Johnson brothers were uh, sticks. There were hammers up there and everyone really, you know, liked them. And they just fit our mold because we needed some, you know, exposure in Canada too. And uh, actually getting two guys as, as brothers. Right. Because they actually thought they would split up. And they said, well, we'll one of us will go with you. One of us is going to go, no, I I'm, I want both of you or none of you. I, mean, I want the package. And it's, it's, it's they new- are the little bit of dealings I've had with them. They're, they're super nice. I mean, always accommodating and, uh, and fun to be around, which I think that kind of fits the whole team. Everybody's fun, fun to be around except for Ish. I mean, we all, yeah. have to be around, right. Oh, you know, that's, you right, that's, that's right. He has that. Uh, yeah. We, 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 He's really you knew he's my brother, like right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, what I'm taking from all this is, uh, you know, there's a lot, of, and I know a lot of people have a lot of questions on how they become a professional angler, and but the big part of it is make sure you get the right sponsors and the good sponsors. Uh, but it's not just on being a good fisherman. There's a lot of great fishermen out there, but you got to be able to do a little bit more, and you got to be able to work with your sponsor and help your sponsor. One of the one of the lines that sticks with me forever, and I tell people all the time when they ask me about this, is the term "pro staff" does not mean professional staff; mm-hmm. it means promotional staff. Right, that's correct. So it is a very very important part of what they do. This is their career. This is their job, and it's not just winning tournaments. That helps. That helps a lot, obviously. Uh, but they got to be able to in turn work with your sponsors, promote the sponsors, and do it effectively. So there's a whole character that has to be involved with that. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, obviously you've been doing this so long, you've been managed to put together tremendous teams. And I know it's not just because of the skill set that these guys have. It's also the character that they they have out there. So maybe touch on that a little bit, Kurt, if you don't mind, on these up and coming youngsters that are working their way and they want to attract a great big sponsor like Daiwa. What should they focus on or what should, what what advice would you give them? moving on forward you know mike i get that question uh asked a lot when they when they try to get on the team how do i get on the team what do i got to do to you know be on the team what do you look what do you guys look for and so you know i'll give you guys that are listening a free advice you know it you have to first off you have to be honest with yourself and if you think you're a pro and you can catch fish you actually have to prove it you actually have to have some wins under your belt uh, a string of good placement in the tournaments because that's all going to lead to your success. And if you actually have that and you can really come out of the gate fishing, actually sponsors will come to you and, and look for you because they can see you're winning. And when you win, you get the exposure, you get the cameras on you, right? And you're wearing the Jersey and the logos on there. That's what they're looking for. That's what manufacturers are looking for is their, their logo on your Jersey in the camera because you're winning but that's not it's not all about that you have to uh, ask yourself you know what can i do for my sponsors Uh, i have to give something back to my sponsors especially if they're paying me you know you can't just go out and do that when 
if, if you win, you're probably going to be okay. You know, if you're like Kevin Van Dam, you're oh. going to have a problem. But if you're, hard, you're, though. you're not going to always win, right? You're not going to always have a season where you can constantly win. So you have to give back to the company in other ways. Like like I mentioned, Brent Ayler doing videos. He, he did a five-part series on systematic selling, like he said, why he uses this. And he just did that on his own. I didn't even ask him. He, I told him that's what we need to do. He just does it because he knows he has to be working for the company. And he does that really well on his own. But if you're a beginning guy, let's say, and you're, you're kind of uh, just coming out of college and you're, you're, you don't know how to get started, you, you can start. A lot of times I recommend if I don't know a guy who, you know, that comes to me that who he is or he's, he has no experience, I say, you know, I tell him the same thing. You're going to have to show that you can win. And if you really can't show that you can win, you have to be real to yourself and know, is this really the sport that I can be in? Because if you can't compete with these guys, you're just going to be, you know, in the middle of the pack. You got to find a way to be, you know, in the top of the pack. But what you start off is you actually go to companies that you really believe in those products. That's Truly, you need to believe in the products yourself and you shouldn't try to represent companies who you you're just taking money from if you don't really use their products because we've we've seen that out there too sure. so you first want to try to pick the companies that you believe in that you like their products it doesn't always work that way but that's the main goal you start off with the second thing is you want to maybe contact the rep group that works for that company and get a hold of them because that's a starting level and re- we do the same thing regionally we ask the rep group for the pro staff and what they use their pro staff for is going to an in-store event, helping sell products, going to sports shows, having them work in the booth. And they're, they're actually, they're actually going to learn their product by being in the booth. You're going to meet consumers at some of these shows that will start to get to know you and talk to you. And you start to build up a reputation. Or you might go to the sports show and, you know, the, the company might say, hey, uh, we need someone on the, on the you know, the, the lure tank. So then you get some experience doing seminars and yeah. so you in fact seth fighter this is exactly how he started he came to, to us came to me and the rep group told me hey man this guy's a stick he's winning everything in minnesota can you put him on the team and i said not now he, they said what do you mean i'm telling you this is the guy he's gonna this is the guy that's gonna and i said hey they all say that but is he gonna work for us <laughs> and so I said, you, I, I told the rep, I said, you need to train him. You need to train him at the shows since he's new. Get him started now since you think he's going to be your guy. Get him used to the product. Get him to know the product. And, you know, once you start, you know, maybe I'll think about it. So first they said they did that. And he goes, okay, he's ready. I go, no. He, he goes, I said, he, is he in the elites? They go, no, he's, he's in the open. So I go, I'm starting this team off. And I only had about four guys. I think I had Brett and Cody only. And I said, uh, he has to be on the elites. I'm not starting with anyone lower than elite, you know, right. quality. And they were like, well, that's pretty hard. I go, well, that's my requirement. I said, if Seth can make it to the elites, you call me and I'll put him on. I'll give you, I'll give you my word. He's got to be elite guy. You keep training him. You keep having him do seminars. So he'll be ready when he makes right. the elites. And that's what, he, and Seth was willing to do it. He did all that. He made it to elites. They called me and said, hey, he's, he got into the elites. And I said, he's on the team. And then he had to work a little bit more, but he was really prepared when he came on. He knew the product. He can go to sports shows, talk to people edu- you know, about the product because he did his work. He did all the groundwork first. And when he went to the show, he was, he was ready to go. Ready to and so that's what I urge guys to begin with is work with a local rep for that company. Um, help them out at sports shows. Uh, ask them, what can I do? Um, the other thing you have to do nowadays is before in the old days, Larry Nixon, Rick Clinton, you just had to fish and that's all right. there yeah. was. There was no internet. Nowadays, you got to learn how to uh, promote yourself on the internet and Facebook, Instagram, all the social media stuff you right. need to learn how to do. And that's also going to help your sponsors. And you can get popular that way too by doing educational videos and training people how to catch more bass. Because that's how that's what consumers want to know. How how is Seth catching all these bass? How does he do that? He he'll throw him a tip because the guys that are really good know there's a lot more to it than just knowing the right equipment. You got to still find the fish, 
you got to have some experience on the lake and all of this other factors are, or it could change every day. So they don't mind telling you to get started. The, a lot of them will. Some of them won't. Some of them are really stingy and think, no, I don't want to give anything up because that's my secret. <laughs> those are the, those are the, right? Yeah, those yeah. Are the you guys, do. I do not know what you're talking about. Kurt. Well, those are the guys that, you know, you don't learn anything from. And, you know, maybe they're not as popular as these guys that really want to help you and, and teach you. So that's something you're going to have to do is, is learn how to promote yourself and help, uh, you know, on, on YouTube and, and Facebook, give out some tips and gain, you know, popularity so that, you know, people start to like you and they want to follow you. And as they follow you, the sponsors will will look. I look at numbers. I look at the, how many likes the guy has. And Seth Fighter's got amazing. Brandon Pollock's amazing. And, you know, a lot of the guys on the team, they get good numbers. And a lot of my team, if you watch them, they're on Facebook all the time. Uh, Brandon Pollock is. Seth Fighter is. You see them all the time. Brent and Ehler, Cody Meyer, they're always on there because they – they need to keep their numbers up and they want to, they want to, they, so, and you older guys, you got to do that. That's part oh, of the deal. Yes. There's a, there's yes. a lot of older guys that want to be, you know, <laughs> with a company, but they don't do anything because they're old school and you can't be an old school guy and be sponsored by good companies. So Not if nice. you can't, if you can't do that yourself, you got to hire someone like Ricky, Ricky right. to Ricky and Mikey, Mike Ricky and Mikey to go am, out right? there and video you at the tournaments in fact, that's what you guys do for me. And that's, you know, Ricky does, uh, and Mikey, you guys do the uh, recap when the, when the day's over and my pros give tips. And that's part of what I get back from them and getting the, the, you know, product across to you guys and why they did and how they did it. And that's what the older guys have to do. That's get a guy to film, get hire someone. You need that. You need that uh, social media video content. That's Probably the biggest thing today the, is the videos that they put out. The one thing I'll say, and Kurt and I have had this argument before about the wins. It's so hard to win at the elite level and the, the BPT level. I just think consistency is the biggest thing. And, you know, we may argue about that, but to go win a, a elite series, you've done something. Um, so don't base your whole – thought process on winning just think about being consistent i'll take a i'll take a consistent guy over a, a guy that wins one a year every day if he's you know if if he yeah i mean i'll just take a consistent guy over a winner every day yeah. so ricky you're you're talking about cody meyer our friend <laughs> you just say it. go ahead and say it so <laughs> You know, he is, he is very consistent, though. He's he is one of the most consistent guys. But, and, and probably does as much work, if not more, sells more product than any Daiwa guy that I know. So yeah. uh, you don't have to win. I mean, Kurt's always about what has he won. We've had this argument and conversation more than once. Just go out there and, and, and fish your best, be consistent, and promote the sponsors, you know. Uh, don't don't act a fool. Don't you know? Don't run your mouth when you shouldn't. Do a good job. Know your product, and and things will will, will work out for you. It's definitely yeah. uh, a, a balance. You got to work it. It's going to really help. You know, if you're winning a lot, you're always sure. up there. But and may, then maybe you don't have to promote as much or recreate your character or content as much if you're constantly winning. But if you're not always winning. You got to balance that back out by putting a little bit more into the content, into the character, into the promotion. And that's what's going to, from what I can understand, going to really keep your sponsors happy and attract new ones out there. And if Paul you're about the only one that does that. He wins everywhere he goes and he promotes the hell out of himself. So he's like, the if you want to model yourself after somebody, Brandon Polonek is the guy. Heck yeah. Yeah. And, and Brandon. Brandon actually has a guy, a film guy, sure that he does. follows him around and films him during the tournaments. And right. All, he, all day long. Yeah. You're winning two elite years, two elite tournaments a year, you can afford to do that. You know, your average guy can't afford to do that. I mean, they have to hire me or Mikey or somebody. <laughs> yeah. You're going to have to hire. Well, he actually hires someone too, but you're going to have to hire you or someone or, right. you know, learn how to do the GoPro yourself. Sure. Turn it off the front of the boat, get some, get some action shots you're gonna have to learn how to edit if you if you're a young guy and you you start to develop those skills like brent ayler did brent ayler can actually Ayler's the best at it if, doing it on his own ayler's the best 
he does it. And if he, he unfortunately, sometimes he doesn't have time now, but right. uh, he can actually do his own stuff and he will do his own stuff. If you can develop that skill, you can have the complete package. You can make your own videos, post them on Facebook all the time. Um, you'll gain popularity a lot. Give tips out to the fishermen. Um, Cody, again, going back to Cody, Cody's one of the most consistent guys, but he also does the other things. He does the videos for all of his sponsors, promotes them in tournaments when he, you know, he can and it's right. appropriate. Um, and he's actually getting better. He's had a great year. I, I talk to Cody almost every week saying, man, you really had a great year this year and you know, going to the Cubs or whatever. And he's going to win one. He's definitely sure really he is. close. He's so close. It's funny how he hasn't won yet. I always tell him that. How does this happen? You haven't won any winning things major because uh, he's he's so close. He lost by ounces, I think, for winning the um, FLW championship one year. But he made it there nine times in a row. Most That's guys right. can never make it that, that consistent. But, yeah, yeah consistency. I do look at that. I look at the consistency, uh, where are they placed. But then I have to help them uh, develop the video side of it and, and the product knowledge. And that you can do that, though. But you got to still – if you can't fish – and place high, no one's going to want to watch you. They're not going to want to see. That's right. You see what you're doing. You said that was my that. problem my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> That's most it. of our problem. Just, just like the fishing industry, you uh, you know, in Iowa, you've had to evolve as as things change and time goes. Well, so does the other half of the industry. That's right. The anglers have to learn to evolve to get more active in social media. Whether you just because you didn't do it five years ago, well, times have changed. And right. now you need to be doing that. We're constantly changing. And that's where Bass 365, that's basically why we're here. That's what we do to help these guys out, to be able to help you guys out. So we're trying to work it all. So the sponsors work with the anglers. We work with the anglers and the sponsors. And uh, hopefully it all works around in one thing. But you got to be consistent out there and you got to continue to evolve. And you got to keep yourself a presence. You got to make a steady presence out there. And if you can't be winning all the time, you better be getting your face in front of a camera a little bit more. Well, just, just like we're trying to do today, uh, working with Bass 365, and, you know, Ricky and Mike, we're, we're trying to help you guys out there become better pros. And these are some of the things we're giving you advice on to try to help you get to that level that you want to be at. Because that's a big question I get asked a lot is how do you get on the team? And I, I actually tell them the same way I'm telling you. This is what I need to see you do when you come back a year or two later and you got some wins um and if i see you doing you know social media let's talk you know let's see you know and if if you can fish better like patrick and it happens that quicker you're just gonna uh, you know right. it's gonna happen faster for you you're just gonna be sore so much you know? Absolutely. and i i think there's different levels out there too you know of, of, of exposure we've got one gentleman asking us about you know can you ever get a sponsorship if you don't have a boat if you're just a pond fisherman i think maybe not team Iowa entirely like the big you know upper echelon of the team but there are going to be different levels of pro staff brand ambassadors uh right. pro team things along those lines that that you can still have a lot of success with in, in that range so don't doesn't mean just because you don't have a boat doesn't mean don't you can't get on there. And, and and you sponsorship can't. means product. You know, uh, you know there are a lot of lot of companies that would love to give product to a, a pond fisherman to go shoot videos with, but you have to do both parts of it. You can't just get the product and then do nothing with it, right? Exactly. You got to be putting content out there. You got to be creating, and you got to get that exposure that, that ultimately is what everybody's after. So sure, exactly, and hey. Uh, there was another question, Kurt, from David, and I'm not even going to attempt his last name. But uh, what discontinued product would you bring back from Iowa? Well, it's funny. We still have um, a lot of people talk about the SS 1300 spinning reel. In fact, uh, Brent Ehler, Ish Monroe, both both mentioned that that's the first reel that they ever had, a uh, real quality reel. We right. actually still make that reel. And I keep telling them, guys, we still make it. You know, it, it keeps selling. We still made it. But um, actually, you know, our reels have changed so much. I don't know why you would go back to anything we used to make because the technology changes so much. And we've we've changed so much ourselves that there's not too many 
reels I can even think of that I'd want to go back to, you know, because it changes. I don't know if you saw it this year or not, but uh, and I'm looking around the office for it now, and I can't put my hands on it. But uh, and you you left off a very important pro staff guy too. Mm, I always do that. <laughs> Which one did I leave off? Freaking like, Bill Dance. Oh yes, yes. I had a, a a pro light. 100 or whatever it was and i carried it to around with me this year and i had each one of the guys do a video on the difference between the tatula now and that pro light when i had it when i was 10 years old or 15 years old it was the best reel you could get you know yeah. um bill dance so, also had a team dial rod also with a, a pistol grip even and something that's right, a pistol. <laughs> We don't see you anymore. I got it. That was quite a while ago, and I'm going to hear really funny story about that rod. And so I couldn't have been – oh, God, I don't even know. I was young, 10 years old, somewhere in that range, and I, I delivered so many Sears catalogs back in Canada to buy that rod. <laughs> we went out to Florida, where I live now, and we were fishing. Actually, in saltwater. The snook were running in this one creek. My whole family was sitting there fishing, and I was so happy. It was my first day. I get to use my brand new rod that I worked so hard for, my built dance spe dance special rod. And I remember we were caught so many snook live baiting, and my father asked me if he did to come with him. And I said, I can't put my rod down. A fish is gonna pull it in the water. It's gonna lose it. He stuck it between the boards of the dock and said, "Come with me." And I didn't walk two feet down, and I heard that noise that I dreaded so much. I heard that rod sliding down the dock. Whoop, off into the <laughs> I was so upset, and naturally so. I threw a tantrum. Naturally. My dad had to go take me to the nearest tackle shop in the Florida Keys and buy me a whole new rod and reel combo, which was not a Bill Dance combo, but it was pretty nice. Um, no, no kidding, guys, though. I don't want to take too much time. Two hours later, we're still sitting there, and my grandmother starts hooting and hollering that she's got a big one, a big giant fish on. And she's reeling it in, reeling it in. And you get this big snook. I, I don't know why, but I decided I'm going to help her land this fish. I'm hanging over the dock, and I'm about to grab that fish by the gill plate, and I see another line coming out of its mouth. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> so I, I just as I go to grab it, it shakes me off. I reach and I grab the line. It snaps off, but I still got the line. The fish snaps off. Her line takes off. I hand line it in. It was my other rod, my build dance rod. She actually caught the same fish that took a while off with the rod and still had it in his mouth. So not only – I may have lost that snook twice, apparently. It was a big one. But I actually walked away with two brand-new rod and reel combos. So that was a pretty funny day. Okay. But I know the rod you're talking about. I've heard stories like that. That is pretty unusual to, to see that. Uh, you younger guys, they're going, what is a pistol grip? Look, look <laughs> online. <laughs> You'll see. Yeah, see they are, too. <laughs> Well, this was great. We were learned so much, and you know we're already past an hour. It's amazing how fast time flies out here. Um, before we let you go, though, Kurt, we really want to thank you for coming on. You opened our eyes a lot. You taught us a lot, and I'm sure a lot of our viewers out there have have learned a lot from it. So, guys, anybody that's still watching, you got any questions for Kurt before we get we let him go? Make sure you put it down here. We'll try to answer them. Um, but. Before we do let you go, Kurt, is there anything new coming from Daiwa? Any news that you want to share with us yet? Or any what's the future holding for Daiwa out there? Do we know? Or is this all well, we we always have something new. I will say that. Every year we come up with something, new products or new additions to the line, just like we did with the line. There are some, and I can't say right now because it's <laughs> it's next come year. On, right? Come Rick on. keeps trying to pry stuff out of me, and I keep saying, Rick, you can't talk about that. You know, <laughs> on camera, he knows off camera, but I said, on camera, we can't talk about that. In fact, we talked about three things we're not going to talk about. I said, no, we're not talking about this. <laughs> so so we, we do have always something new. And, and you know, I, I'm really um, glad that we have some great technology and the products keep getting better. And we've been very fortunate to be, you know, on that end of having um, a lot of technology come our way that and and great fishermen too great, uh, fishermen. great fishermen using the products educating everybody and and a lot of people like you in the industry that help we all work together help each other uh, try to you know help the fishermen and you know like i mentioned before i think major league fishing and bass um, both can can really thrive together and the benefit that i see is you know it's just going to help our industry out get bigger you know 
And with this COVID thing, um, a lot of you know that many people are going outdoors and camping and buying RVs and actually fishing. A lot of boats have been sold out because they're, you know, people are buying them. And, you know, we think that's great. And it's an opportunity for us to help uh, educate these new fishermen into the sport so that they will enjoy it uh, just like we did when we were young and how we got into it most likely from our parents. And, uh, you know, for a period of time, a lot of that went away and kids were using Game Boys and on their stuff. Right. You know, we're going outdoors where I think any little kid that's five or so, they love to go camping. When I, I, when I was little, I did that. I took my kids camping and they loved it. Just they never, some of them don't get the opportunity. So sure. I think it's great that now maybe some of the families are going camping and getting their kids outdoors and getting to enjoy the, the great outdoor sports that we that we enjoy. That's right. Great. I was I was hoping that at least one of my two fishermen would show up for a guest appearance tonight, but I guess they got scared because you intimidate them, Kurt. But yeah. uh, you know what I'm talking about. And uh it, it's it I can tell you for for my two boys it's been amazing what they've accomplished uh watching them grow as fishermen and as a parent uh there's not a lot that'll make you a whole lot prouder except for maybe a, a home run over center field fence or something like that but uh uh yeah it's it's our, our sport is in really good shape thanks to companies like like Daiwa and people like you that, that truly get it that's right thank you. you know one thing i just want to say is i i have noticed that uh, we we actually help sponsor the Alabama Bass Nation and right. it's high school kids, and it's so great to see these high school kids out there with their dad because they're usually too young to drive the boat, and the, you have to have a parent as the captain. And and there's like 200 to 300 boats out there, and it's it's kind of neat to have the weigh in and and the families come to watch the weigh in like you would come to a soccer game or a baseball right. game and set up your little canopy and watch the game. Well, they're they're out there watching their kids weigh in, and and I I think that's great to see, and we're we're really glad to be a part of that and getting kids involved in that. So, super happy that these kids are getting out, and the parents are thanking the parents for really getting their kids to be able to do that. That's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it you know, and the talent level of these kids is amazing. They can they can run the front of the boat. They can use the electronics. They understand the GPS. Uh, and they, and they can make a, a TikTok video at the same time. So yeah. or, or whatever that other thing is, they use uh, Snapchat. But um, uh, it's amazing because I mean, I, I know there most of these young kids are better with electronics than I than I ever could think of being. Um, I've been out on the water before and had to call my son and say, "Hey, how do I do this?" And not good. That's not good, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. I know what you mean? But anyway, but, Kurt, you know. They're their Thank future. You for having us, Mike. We've kept him so long. I know he's got all things to do. They're all, they're just getting off work there in, in California. Um, right. It's dinner time. That's yeah. right. Kurt, thank you, man. I appreciate it so much. Uh, glad to call you a friend. Glad to have Dio as a partner. And um, Cody's going to win one this year. He what is. Bet. And I want to thank you guys as well for having me on the show. Enjoyed it very much. And you guys are great partners to work with. Um, thanks again for all what you guys do. Uh, Absolutely. Mikey, shut us on down, baby. Kurt, we thank you so very much. You helped us all out a lot. We all learned a lot, and it's been really enjoyable. I hope we get to do this again sometime real soon. But on a personal level, I want to thank you again for what you've done for me here, getting me more involved in the world of Daiwa, because I'm really loving it right now. So I really appreciate it. And uh, it doesn't look like we got any more questions, so we're going to cut you loose. You go have some dinner. Enjoy your California sunset because that's coming any minute now. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll, right. and we'll talk to you again real soon, Kurt. Thank you very, very much for being with us today. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. See you, Kurt. All right. All right, bye. Mike. Oh, what a great, great. Oh, where'd it go here? There we go. What a great guy. That was Bro, awesome. He, yeah. You know, again, I met him. He was with Jackal. I met him. We worked together for a couple years with Jackal. And then uh, he introduced me to Cody when he was a co-angler. And then he left and went. Anyway, it's been a long relationship. But yeah. absolutely one of the greatest people I've ever met. He's a little I, bit hung up on the winds. He needs to get off the winds a little bit. I've told him that. But, you know, 
Who doesn't like a W? Who doesn't, especially when it's your I, team? Of course. Exactly. Who does not like the W? Yeah, someone um, here, though, that's been in this industry for as long as that, I would love to just literally sit down and pick his brain one day. The stories he's got to have working with all these guys for that long throughout all these and watching the shift of, you know, the Japanese stuff coming over a little bit more and how, you know, oh, God, I, there's, I got a million questions I would love to ask him. On well, I will tell you that, and, you know, we kind of alluded to it a little bit. There's some big news coming January 1st in a couple of different areas. Um, and we're going to have some work to do on the FLW tour this year. But uh, Daiwa is, you know, I, I, I don't. They're class. They're class people, and we like working with class people. I, absolutely. Um, and the product, like, the product's amazing. Just like he said, with uh, anybody that's looking to get a get sponsorship, you don't just choose to work with just anybody for any reason, just because right. it's there. You choose to work. Your name and your reputation are the only things that carry you carry with you your entire life out there so make sure you're working with companies that you actually enjoy the product and will work with in the first place so i was a home run when it comes to me so i'm yeah, really, absolutely. really happy we get to we get to work with them as much as we do and uh, all right let's, so let's I, shut it on down i think i'm ready for bed i'm i'm ready to go for dinner too i you know I, i'm waiting for that all the time um <laughs> well, before we do we just got a quick question here from salisbury fish and he's been following us for a little while uh on a bunch of these he wants to know if we all take recommend recommendations for guests on lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, that's one thing we were just about to say. Guys, we're doing this every Tuesday and Thursday night here at Bass365. Our live cast shows are getting more and more popular, and that's the whole goal. But they're only going to be as good as they can be when it's what you want to see. So you guys let us know who you want to see on here. And it doesn't have to be a fisherman, of course, just like Kurt out here. An industry professional, we can get a hold of a lot of them too. So they got a, a lot of knowledge, and that's the whole point out there. So make sure you let us know who it is you want to see out there, and we do take recommendations. So we just got a comment to have I Lucas see. on here. Um, we can have Lucas on. Who yeah. wants to see Lucas on the show? Yeah, Justin, that'd be that'd be fantastic. <laughs> uh, Salisbury Fishing is now saying Brandon Cobb or Scott Martin. Scott Martin, um, that would be easy. Scott may be a little bit of a challenge, but I bet we can get him. Brandon Cobb, not a problem. You can definitely get. I know him personally, but Scott has got to be he, – he, he's got to be the busiest guy. In. Salisbury Fishing. But let's have Salisbury.Fishing on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're helping us out a lot by asking these questions here too. So Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we definitely – We can talk, we can talk pond fishing. Yeah, yeah I, that is a huge thing, and that's where I got my start. I guarantee that's where you got your start. Absolutely, everybody got their start. So there's a lot, a lot I can talk to you guys about that one. That's for sure, and a lot that we can all learn about and it. Maybe too. we can even show them your little boat, your little round boat. That's yeah, kind of yeah, definitely. If you guys haven't seen my videos, I I do most of them on a little roundabout boat because uh, to get in my little lakes here, it's pond fishing, but it's pond fishing on the water. So it's kind of kind of a bit different. Water is a good deal. Mike, so shut it down. I'm ready for bed. We got a busy day tomorrow. Um, Tuesday night. I don't know that we have anybody lined up directly, but uh, maybe it's Lucas. Maybe it's Salisbury. We'll figure it out. We got the whole weekend to figure it out here. So we got a lot of things that a lot of things to take care of. But there's a lot happening here, guys. There's a whole lot. Make sure you're following us here on YouTube. On Facebook, Bass365.com. On Instagram, Bass underscore 365. The app is just about ready to go. It's coming. This week, I'm telling you, this week, I promise you. Um, and that's going to be that's gonna be an absolute game. Yeah, it's, I'm going to take a, a week off. Once you guys, it's done. Yeah, a mobile app where you guys get notified immediately of what's going on out there. That's pretty, pretty darn cool. These live casts are going to get bigger and better, so stay tuned for more and more of those. Drop it in the comments any which way where you're following us. And if you want to make sure you got some of the best gear out there, just like these guys do, stop at the Bass Three Six Five store. Yeah, kick ass store, kick ass apparel. You know, you want to, you know, you want to wear the Bassies brand. Help us keep this going. Uh, check it out. I mean, it's absolutely whatever. I mean, or I'm stuff, right? the store. There's more, and we're getting more and more products on there. We have hundreds of products on there as it is, but. The more popular these shows get, the more of these companies like Daiwa and other ones 
want to get involved with this stuff too. So the more it's a, there's an incredible amount of product on that store already. Make sure you get to 365stores.com. Mike, I got to preach my one last preach and then I'm out of here. Um, gotcha. All the stuff going on on social media, everything else. I'm sick of it. I think everybody else that fishes is pretty much sick of it. Download the app. We have our own social platform. That's right. It's going to be fishing only. If you don't want to put up with the rest of the crap out there, uh, we're going to try to build a home for fishermen. That's right. Um, we need your help, though. I mean, we absolutely need your help. Bass 365 Live is the app. Download it. I promise you by Monday it will be fully operational or... Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. It's there. <laughs> Download it now, and you can start playing around with it. That's there's right. Great things we're putting into that app, and that's what he's talking about. It's just kind of getting it, getting it all streamlined. Out in right. There's a whole section on there called the social section where you guys can put your own content yes. out there and share it with the rest of us out here too. So it's all the social medias in one place, right on your phone, right there. So that's make sure right. you check it out. Fast three six five live. It's, it's there for iPhone. It's there for Androids. It's all everything you need out there. So get on there. Get on the store. Follow us on all the other sites if you can't do that. But we can't wait to see you guys again next time. Guys, thank you so very much. For me, Mikey Moser and Ricky B, we're out, we're out of here. We'll see you guys again soon.